What's up, Internet? I'm back, and I've got some news. I'm very tired, and I'm starting to get a little bit sick from all the effort I've been putting in. But I've got a bit of a plan for something I want to release in the future, which requires me to throw in a lot of time and a lot of work. Uh, ultimately, it's not going to mean all that much to you. It's just going to mean a lot of work for me in the future as well. But I hope someone appreciates it when it happens in a few weeks, hopefully. But the point of this video is I'm very tired. I've been cutting down to like two hours of sleep a day. And uh, I'm also an insomniac, so that's not very good for me when I can't sleep. So I figured I'd record a video. And uh, the game I'm playing right now, it just came in the door today. And it's a game I haven't seen in about 15 years. And I just felt like I needed to talk about it. So without further ado, let's get out of the action replay menu and start the game and we'll just talk about this as well as some other stuff that's going on uh, this import card that uh, allows me to play import titles on the Saturn is awesome because this game in North America costs a whole lot more than like the two dollars I paid and this is by Sonic Team and before you guess no it is not Nights into Dreams although I do have to play that sometime soon um, no, this is something much more else than Nights into Dreams. But it's something I think everyone should know about. For you see, this is the almighty... Sonic Jam. What he said. Now what is Sonic Jam? Well, it's a Sonic compilation disc. And this is probably the part where you roll your eyes. But I ask you not to do that, because not only is it a Sonic compilation, I would say this is the Sonic compilation, the definitive one that you should have if you're a Sonic fan. You got Sonic 1, 2, Sonic 3, and Sonic and & Knuckles, along with Sonic & Knuckles attached to all of them. So take that Ultimate Genesis collection. Further proving you're not as ultimate as you'd like everyone to believe. But uh, let's start by playing some standard Sonic the Hedgehog and see where this goes. Go in, game starts, we'll go with normal. And uh, that's very interesting, is there's a normal, an easy mode, and I'll show you each of those, as well as an original mode. Because this wasn't simply emulated from the Genesis, this was straight up recreated in the Saturn. So, you think you know Sonic the Hedgehog? You don't know shit about Sonic the Hedgehog. Just take a look at this. That's the Sonic Spin Dash which was added in Sonic 2. And when I first saw this when I was a kid, it blew my goddamn mind. Now, if you are a purist, you can actually remove this, and you can play it normally. But there's a few other options in this game, like uh, being able to remove the timer, as well as uh, being able to time attack any level in all four games, and all the special stages if you want. So, uh, it's very cool because not only does it give you the four games, but it also remixes them as well as giving you like three variations of it depending on your skill level and how much of the game you want to experience. So, uh, Spin Dash. Not very useful in Sonic the Hedgehog, but it's still very cool. Now, that was the first level, and I think you get the point. So let's just, uh, we'll go straight to Sonic 2, and we'll see what we can do with that. So that was on normal mode. So let's go to Sonic 2, and we'll go to original mode, which is as it would be on the Genesis. Plus or minus a few tweaks to audio and uh, balances. They did uh, redo a lot of the sound effects, which I think is probably the low point of the game, because some of them just sound odd. But it's Sonic 2, the one everyone seems to think is the best. I'm not sure I agree. But it's Sonic 2 in all of its Sonic 2 glory, as portrayed on the Genesis. Now I'm not sure if this was uh, straight up emulation, whereas the other ones were more or less remade. But um, I know that the ones that were remade also had a few different tweaks to it, such as um, really just balance stuff. Um, there, there's pickups in different locations as well as some additional stuff. But, uh, yeah, 
this is Sonic 2 on the Genesis. I'm sure you have all played it. If not, you are a bad person. And that's classic Sonic 2 as portrayed by the Genesis. Let's get out of here. And we will play something a little more different. So let's go B. And we will skip Sonic 3 and go to Sonic and Knuckles because it's the same game. And notice, we can pick which game we want to lock onto, as well as play it independently. Which, you either don't get it locked on or you don't get to play it independently, which is weird. Now let's just uh, take a look at this. So we got Time Attack and Special Stages off. The yeah, special stages options, which allow you to do just that. You can time attack a single independent stage if you like. Like, if you wanted to go in here and... I don't know, go to Hidden Palace Zone or whatever, you could do it. I don't think you get to pick your character, though. So, I'm... And I'm really certain you can't take Knuckles into... Like, the Doomsday Zones. And special stages is basically just running the gauntlet of the special stages. So let's just take a quick look at that. And, uh... I was super bad at these when I was a kid. Like, and part of the reason is this. Just, uh, this little maneuver. I didn't realize looping the, uh, blue orbs removes them from play. I thought you had to run over and collect each individual one. It wasn't until I was like, I don't know, 13 that I realized this, and I got much better. <laughs> uh, I was really, really, really bad at this. But, uh, yeah. Sonic Jam, it's Sonic compilation of the four games, the lock-on games, the remixed versions of the games, as well as a mysterious fifth game, although... Although the f calling it a game might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean, because that's... If all the different variations and options that this game gives you to play all the classics wasn't enough, I think the, uh, the new game that they give you is totally worth it. For a few reasons, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. And now we've got a Chaos Emeralds, and we'll just skip out of that. And I'll actually show you the easy mode real quick, just to show you what that's like in Sonic and Knuckles, because... It's basically the other half of Sonic 3, and this one I actually had when I was a kid. I'm sad that someone stole this, because it was a really unique, cool cart. Had like a flip top on it, you could put other games into it. But, uh, Sonic and Knuckles was a very unique game. I'm gonna play as Knuckles, because he's my boy. And, uh, we had to watch the cutscene open, which you don't get if you're playing it connected to Sonic 3. You also don't get to play his Knuckles, so you have no idea why he's fighting. Aside from the fact that you get to play his Knuckles in those games. More or less the same reason why you'd play his Knuckles in Sonic 2. No real plot as to why you're just doing it because you can. This is Mushroom Hill Zone, one of my favorite levels, I think. Mainly because my only other Sonic game I could play was Sonic 1, and... It wasn't bad, but I just didn't find Sonic 1 as cool as Sonic and & Knuckles. And Flying Battery Zone, the uh, level after this I could never beat when I was a kid. <laughs> Mainly because uh, there was a really awkward jump early on with floating platforms that I always got killed at if I played as Sonic. And if I played as Knuckles, I could get past it, but... I uh, couldn't figure out where to go after that because there's like a spot where you have to stand still for 10 seconds, which is really obtuse. But as I'm sure you can hear the, uh, if you're paying attention, and the muffling audacity puts over my footage in Movie Maker doesn't muffle it too bad, the, uh, jump sound effect is different, and not, I don't think in a good way. It, it sounds a lot less powerful, if that makes sense. But I like the, uh, spin dash sound. Um, but yeah. But yeah, um, I really like this game. I haven't seen this in like 15 years, and if you own a Saturn, you need this. Because it is absolutely worth it. The only problem is, getting a North American copy is really expensive. Uh, I've seen it go as high as like $100. Whereas, my copy's in Japanese, which is kind of interesting, because it gives you the option to get the uh, English manuals on this as well. But this cost me like, maybe $2. 
and normally I have a flame shield at this point, so I, I'm basically dead. But, easy mode. Bosses only take three hits to kill. I gotta grab that, because on easy mode, it does a neat little thing called, you only play one act of each stage. And now we're in flying battery. For reasons. I can't stand flying battery though, so... We probably won't be playing this for much longer. But, uh, yeah. Sonic and Knuckles. It's it's Sonic and Knuckles. You can play Blue Sphere, you can play Knuckles in Sonic 2, you can play the full version of Sonic 3, play Sonic and Knuckles alone. It's very cool. Now these are the four staples you'd expect in a Sonic collection. Usually Sonic and Knuckles is kind of iffy because it's usually combined with Sonic 3. But this one adds something else. Something that I would say is worth getting this game alone. Something called Sonic World. Now what is Sonic World? Well, my dear internet, this is Sonic World. It's uh, sort of a whole bunch of things. It's like a, it's a single level 3D environment, which really feels like a demo for an early Sonic 3D game, and honestly, while it's a little bit slow, I would love to play a full game like this. Um, but it's much more than that. It's a tech demo, it's actually fun, but it does have a game to it. You hop on this little red trampoline, whoop, and I'll screw that up, and it'll give you a series of challenges. Now they give it to you one at a time, but I've already beaten it, so all the challenges are already available. But it's like, uh, get 20 rings, so we'll just go do that real quick, because that one's not too long. So we'll grab 20 rings, run around all the statues, bing, Got 20 rings, now I gotta run back to the trampoline to record my time. And it's a bit of a time attack function, but it's fun. There, finish. Did I beat my record? Yes, I did. Okay. So it's that. But there's also these little cards hidden around, and they're actually tied to another challenge, but... Uh, what's neat... If I can stop and read one. It gives you codes to various Sonic games. Now, of course... This is pretty groundbreaking back in the day, because you couldn't just go on Google to figure out all the various debug mode cheats and stuff. So, this kind of showed you a quick way to get to, like, developer modes, which allowed you to kind of design your own Sonic levels a little bit. And that's... that was something that was huge for me when I was a kid. But it's more than just that. For you see, if you go to any standard Sonic collection, and I'm just gonna cherry-pick the Sonic Mega collection because I know that game did it, there's always a option labeled extras, and this option is usually some um, developer sketches and sometimes some soundtracks, a cutscene or two from like Sonic CD or something. That's this. This is basically a glorified extras menu, except not only does it have extras I haven't seen on any other Sonic collection, which we'll see very quickly, they also added a game, so while it takes a little bit longer to get from point A to point B to go see music or whatever, you actually get to play a game, and that's actually pretty awesome to me. So let's see, we can play, oh, let's go back in there, I'm just going to press B instead of A. So we can go in, we can look at any of the songs featured on this disc, so soundtrack number 5 from Sonic the Hedgehog, 6, whatever. I know my numbers, damn it. <laughs> And it's, I want to say, Scrap Brain Zone. Pretty sure. It's either Scrap Brain Zone or the final level, which is the one after that. Anyway, you can go to any song that's in any game on this disc. The only downside to the music is that uh, Sonic and Knuckles has all the uh, songs under Sonic 3 as well, so it takes twice as long to get there. This is the character gallery. And, as you can see, this is the villain door. There's actually a hero door which has all the other heroes on it. So we can look at all the basic enemies from all the games. And some basic sketches. It, it's... It's pretty cool. It's basic, but it's cool. And there's the hero door if you want to go see the heroes. Uh, what else do we got around here? 
around here, I want to say, is the Profile Gallery, which is... Oh, it's the Hall of Fame, which is kind of like an extension of that. It just goes into, like, the bios of the characters and stuff. As well as, like, the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Up to this game, of course. It, it doesn't show the atrocious Sonic 06 or the atrocious anything after Sonic Adventure 2, with the exception of Sonic Generations. And it gives you a little bit of detailed background information and stuff. It was... It was pretty cool, because I think at the time... Oh, there's my boy Mighty, who wasn't in anything else, and I'm bitter about that, because he was the prototype Sonic, and he was the leader of the Chaotix. Could've got rid of Charmy, they got rid of the cool one. Anyway... This is pretty groundbreaking because I don't think there were too many compilation discs like this back in the day, let alone ones that not only extensively covered the history of the games, but also were a celebration of the series it was trying to show. So we'll just go to the movie theater, because there's something really cool I'd like to show you. And uh, then we're probably going to stop because I'm running out of time. So you got the opening and ending of Sonic CD with the Japanese soundtrack, which is totally inferior to the North American one. Uh, let's see, Sonic the Movies. Uh, let's see, this was various TV spots for various games. Like, if you wanted to see the TV spot for Sonic Drift, and actually see something that actually portrays Sonic Drift as an actually kind of interesting game. That's some solid animation right there. I'm just going to say that right there. This makes me almost want to play freaking Sonic Drift, which, not very good. No Tails Sky Patrol or Tails Adventure, though. And while I'm okay that there's no Tails Sky Patrol, I'm pissed there's no Tails Adventure, because that was actually really awesome. Let's just take a look at this, because I haven't seen this one on any other Sonic-related thing ever. You can probably find it on YouTube, but this is something I've only ever seen on this disc. And this is a really neat sort of, really it's a demo piece for, I assume, animation techniques and Sonic, but I thought this, back in the day, I thought this was like a prototype for a new Sonic game that I was super excited about because this looked super cool. I remember back in the day we used to get animation pieces like this instead of advertisements up in Canada on uh, children's TV shows. I think you can find them on YouTube called like the Behind the Minds Eye Shorts. They're like 15 second CG images of just weird psychological things, but this makes me want a first person 3D Sonic game because this looks awesome. Doesn't it? This looks cool. I imagine it would be a little bit janky to play, but I still would love to get a game like this. Because this this still looks cool to me, and this blew my mind when I was a kid. Uh, I haven't seen anything quite like this, or even this test piece on any other Sonic collection ever. So, I, I don't even know what this is. Like, this might just be a test piece. This might have been a prototype or something. I don't know. But, um... I really want to know what this was attached to. And the thing is, all the uh, all the Japanese ads and stuff, they were on the North American disc as well. I just don't remember it from when I was a kid. I played it once, like, 15 years ago. Anyway, this has been a very quick tour of Sonic World in Sonic Jam. Oh. And you can do this. Because why the hell not? And I'd be disappointed if I couldn't do that, to be honest. I spent hours just running around this world as a kid, just doing nothing, making up my own games. Anyway, this has been Sonic Jam, a collection every Sonic fan needs, and I'll see you later. And I'm gonna completely botch my exit. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm sad. Oh well. We'll try this again. This is a cool world, though. Peace out.